Okay, so I read usually in my in the Course in Miracles group, I read a prayer and I was asked a question on, on the prayer that I usually read. And um, okay, so the prayer part of the prayer is from A Course in Miracles. Um, the sleep of forgetfulness is is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love. Let us not wander into temptation. For the temptation of the Son of God is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given. So it was, the question was uh, querying, uh, for the temptation of the Son of God is not your will. Well, you know, is the Son of God temptable? I think it was, it was a line. Surely the Son of God is not temptable. Well, it depends whether I would say what you mean by the uh, Son of God. So if, uh, I would say here, the Son of God is a temptable Son, because if it was beyond temptation, then you know, it wouldn't be referring to something that has the capacity for temptation. Um, so it just depends what you mean by, by that. So I'd say the Son of God has still got some limiting beliefs in it. So it might be, um, you could say everyone is the Son of God, but some of them are very identified with ego. And so there can be a lot of a lot of temptation, you know, the, the classical seven deadly sins. So uh, it would all be in full force. But even if you've transcended, like I don't know, like gluttony, transcended donuts, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you try or transcended six of them, and but you haven't transcended greed, for example, uh, so greed for money, for example, then. Um, that would be a very quite a pure son of God, really, because there's virtually any, nothing left in the world that can hook it out, that it would identify with. But uh, unfortunately, if it saw an opportunity for money, then it still so you know then it would be uh, let us not want, so that son of God. You could say that son of God, which still has the capacity for temptation. You know, we're saying to the, in the prayer, let us not want into temptation. The temptation of the Son of God is not your will. It's, is it God's will that the connection to wholeness be lost for money? No, it's not. It's not that. It's not, it's not the, to fall into duality and suffering. It's not worth the money. <laughs> but for some might choose. It is worth the money. You know, it's like uh, it's like I remember Hawkins saying. I mean, it was like uh, it was, I thought it was quite quite an intelligent joke in a way. It was like. Um, <clears throat> Well, if you're going to sell out, if you're going to sell out your connection to God, at least do it for a lot of money. <laughs> like you know, you're in bliss and nirvana, so it offers you ten p. You know, go steal that ten p. You go, yeah, I'll steal that ten p. Oh my God, I've lost the bliss. <laughs> you know, if you're going to if you're going to sell out to the devil, then you might as well go. Well, it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's let's mug this guy for a lottery ticket. <laughs> I might go to hell afterwards, but there you go. Probably the wording in this, I'll get some remarks in the video for this one. But um, so is it? But um, so uh, on a on a more sophisticated note from Hawkins' research, um, even if you go into the first level of enlightenment, uh, the first stage of enlightenment. So what, what does that mean? It means the ego is burnt off. But does it mean that there's zero temptation, even to an enlightened teacher? Well, actually, there is. I mean, what it means by the ego's burned off at enlightenment is that it's burned off. To, uh, you could say the gross level of being identified with the body and thoughts is gone. You know, it's just been burnt off in the, the burning of the death of the ego. But there's still, um, there's still, you could say, some non-linear temptations, subtle temptations at energetic levels. Um, which are much more esoteric, you know, they're mo much more non-verbal, much not the usual gross temptations that can still occur. So it could be that even though uh, one is in oneness, it's not like a verbal temptation, but there can be a kind of a luciferic energy offering power in the world, for example. You know, it's not really stated in a verbal way to a verbal entity, but uh, th these kind of subtle uh, high level um, <clears throat> non-verbal so you you have different states of enlightenment like the vo the void 
or the emptiness and the infinite infinite love and light so these are not, these are devoid of ego but they're still um, uh, in the sub, if you could say subtle infinite energies which still are not fully refined off into well infinity would be beyond this world so the world would not exist at the uh, total infinity so you could say until until there's infinity there there theoretically could be some something subtle that could allow a fall <clears throat> anyway um so you know so you could say is there something that's beyond temptation um my understanding from Hawkins' work is generally if you've got to, um, in this world, if you've got to the final temptation, which uh, usually happens at, uh, even for enlightened teachers, is a high level temptation, a last temptation. It's like uh, where if you, cut, if you like the collective Luciferic energy offers its biggest um, its, bi <laughs> its biggest offer. <laughs> All right, you've transcended everything. There's nothing really that... That's temptable, but uh, why don't you take this one? Uh, and uh, so that that that's actually uh, <clears throat> given in a non-verbal manner, it's associated at a very high level. So, so um, probably in this world, if if one does that, um, passes that, there's nothing that the luciferic energies can offer, but uh, doesn't negate having a f uh, if there's a physical body there. That, you know, people can't come around and kill it. <laughs> Doesn't affect who, what one is, but the physical body is definitely um, killable. Okay.